I always have notes up when I'm doing these videos here, but the notes for this video are a little bit more thorough than I normally have because at any minute, this entire video could go off the rails. Put on. All right, let's not waste any time here. Announcements up top. I do want to say I might take a break from both Blam and Oro Hodoro next week to do a special Halloween manga. So keep your eyes open for that one. And I'm not telling what it is. You'll just have to be surprised. Also, I got two more patrons this week, so I want to give an extra special shout out to Stoic Bread and Dravic62. That is correct. <laughs> I just want to make sure I said that right. I really can't say how much I appreciate your guys' support. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, moving right along to the video. So this week we're going to pick up right where we left off on the last video, which was like two months ago, with Santa Can face-to-face -face with Kiri. That sneaky little bitch. And Kiri's going to raise his gun and wait. Sibo? And I said in the last video, blam video, I keep wanting to say like last week and last video. This video was a minute ago. Anyway, I said in the last blam video, Sibo would be back due to the nature of how who Sibo is and how she is and how she works and blah, blah, blah. Sibo would be back. I did not expect her to be back in this way. And I did not expect her to be back this quickly. Like literally it was like two pages ago that we lost Sibo and now, hey, she's back. So wow, that was quick, like super quick. But whatever, we're back together now. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try and get inside the cylinder, but the door is closed. So we're going to climb up and around and go in this other way. But when we're trying to get in, the safeguards are going to come and attack and they try to run in. And right when they come to run in, they all collapse because apparently the safeguards aren't allowed inside of Tahoe Heavy Industries. But right as Kiri is trying to open up the door, Santa Can starts to take back control of her body from Sibo. To which Kiri just runs over, grabs her, and literally tosses her inside the cylinder because inside there Santa Can can't function. Which at this point she kind of transforms completely into Sibo, like even looking like Sibo. So, okay. She also looks a little bit like shit too. Like, sh like, you know, not well. <laughs> Anyway, now that we're inside, they're going to travel around and they're going to go looking for the group. They're friends from the village. At this point, I'm flipping through the pages. And at first off, it kind of gives you that old vibe from the first edition of the vast open spaces. And they're just kind of wandering through these locations. And at the same time, I took a long enough break that I forgot how much I like the artwork in this. Like, holy crap, just some of this. It looks so good. But after traveling around for a second, Sibo finds a computer terminal and she's going to attempt to jack into it by sticking her finger in it and literally immediately snaps her finger off to get out of it before it can infect her. Because at this point she realizes that the whole cylinder is being controlled by an intelligent AI, which is dangerous in the first place to give an AI intelligence. And then on top of that, this one appears to have developed psychosis, which, you know, crazy computer AIs. That's always fun, but it's okay. Cause Sibo's just going to like rematerialize her finger. Like it's no big deal because she's slowly learning how to use this new body, which, you know, if you think about it, Santa can could transform into some crazy ass. So I guess rejuvenating a finger isn't that big of a stretch. Also, Kiri, remember in the last book, snapped his arm, literally firing that gun. And a couple pages ago, he was just like, and just, I think that was it. I think it's fixed now. <laughs> so I'm not really sure. Although he's special and we're aware of him being special. Also, Kiri cannot use his gun inside of the cylinder because it's a safeguard weapon. The safeguards aren't allowed in. Safeguards don't function inside there. Therefore, Kiri's gun doesn't function inside there anymore either. But apparently, silicone life can get in and they do get in. And now they're after Kiri and Sibo. And my God, I love this art. Just look at these guys. And they have a grudge that goes back eons. So says him. 
And I went back and I looked for these people because, you know, it goes back eons. They're not in any of the previous editions. At least I couldn't find them. So we're just going to tuck that away in our brains for now because I'm going to bring it up later. But anyway, right when they go to fight the Silicon Life and Kiri, the intelligent AI shows up with her protector that kind of looks like the computer version of a Knight Templar. And they start fighting with the Silicone Life and Kiri and Sibo kind of fall through the floor or something. It isn't super clear. And in the, like the next page, the girl Silicone Life is like literally cut in half and just laying on the floor. I went back and I like flipped through these pages like at least three, four times. Like, did I miss something? No, I didn't miss anything. They're here one page and the next page she's cut in half and they're falling through the floor. I don't, I don't know. But that's okay because Kiri and Sibo are now going to be saved by what I can only call really ugly fairies. And we find out that there are 13 caves in total inside of the Tahoe Heavy Industries network or series or whatever this is. All of which are run by their own unique AI unit. So we're going to attempt to make it to a different cave because that way we can get in touch with hopefully an AI that's not crazy. But first, the ugly fairies are going to take us to a fabricator that can literally fabricate any substance, period, I think. So Sibo uses it to make some materials that are going to refresh her body. So they find an elevator and they get in it, but it won't respond to Sibo. And then it just kind of starts taking them in random different directions, as far as I can tell, and then shoots them out. But when they go out, they leave the cave and their little ugly fairies start dying because they can't survive outside of cave eight. But then the elevator falls back to cave eight or something and the fairies don't end up dying. And now that we're back at cave eight, where we were literally just trying to get away from because we we're going to go find another AI that wasn't crazy. The second we get back, the plan has changed. Now we're going to go find Mensab, the crazy AI, and we're going to talk to her. So... Two pages ago, the plan was to get out of Cave 8 and go find a different AI. Now the plan, two pages later, is to go back to Cave 8 and find the crazy AI. I don't think Kiri and Sibo have any f***ing clue what they're doing at this point. But anyway, now we're on our way to see Mensap. When we run into a silicone life, and Sibo is able to interface with it. And, okay, so at this point we're going to get a little bit of insight into the silicone life. And we learn that... Their language is similar to that of the safeguards, but they use an auxiliary brain similar to that of the humans. But for some reason, this makes me think of the sil silicone life as almost like maybe a type of reanimated human corpse that has been reanimated with safeguard technology. I, I have literally nothing to back that up with, but these are just like crazy thoughts that kind of start banging around in your head as you're reading this. And to be quite honest, I have about 300 other random crazy thoughts that go through my head as I'm reading this. But I absolutely am trying to keep track of the different crazy shit that goes through my head and the story at the same time because I'm going to eventually, as this goes on, piece all of this together into some big master theory as I kind of have little bubble theories that pop up as the story goes along. And those will eventually, like I said, be formulated into some grand master theory that I will hopefully have when this is all said and done, if all goes well. But anyway, we learn that the Silicon Life has been systematically eradicating all humankind in the ultimate goal to eradicate the net terminal gene entirely. So that nobody is left to bring the net back under control. The net is in chaos. They say that they weren't the ones who started the chaos, but they want to ensure that the chaos continues. At which point we find out that Mensab is cornered by the silicone life and we go rushing off to help her, save her. I don't know. But right when we get there, Mensab is starting the forwarding. And Kiri gets sucked into it and he's forwarded to the unstable cave. What does that mean? I have no clue. <laughs> I don't know. Although it's state K4? Is it four? Oh, shit. They said it. I know they did. Oh, well. I think it's four. But he definitely appears to be alone, though. That is, until he's attacked by some giant fucking thing when someone in a black suit comes out to save him and says, finally, a human takes off their mask, and guess what? It's Sibo. 
And this is where it's really going to start to go off the rails. Sibo doesn't recognize Kiri because Sibo's never met Kiri. So he says, you're a different Sibo. And she says, no, I'm the only Sibo. So we clearly have another Sibo who thinks she's the only Sibo. So she's either Sibo from another world, another reality, or another timeline, or another space and time, or another space time entirely. Well, just wait for it, because this is going to get messy. And none of this would be a stretch, because she even specifically states right here that inside of this cave, space and time don't function normally. And suddenly, at this point, Kiri's also going to get a hologram message from the other Sibo, telling him to get to a certain set of coordinates. So now we're off to the coordinates. But a silicone life shows up just as they get there, and they run into Sibo! Are you confused yet? And then she uses something to make his gun work, and I'm not entirely sure what she used or how or why. I'm assuming that it was a piece of material from the fabricator and she fabricated it, but I have literally nothing to back that up with either. And then she says, it took you long enough, I've been waiting here for you for over 10 years. And then Sibo introduces herself to Sibo super casually as, oh hi, I'm the other Sibo from another world. Like it's just no big deal at all. Which, to be fair, is a very Sibo thing to do. And the other Sibo is just like, yeah, I suppose that isn't strange. But anyway, in order to escape, they need to destroy the gravity reactor. And, and in order to do that, they need to blow a hole through the reactor and through the wall and escape. So Kiri then takes Sibo and Sibo and shoots a hole. <laughs> and shoots a hole in the wall and goes to go through it. But the hole closes too quickly and Sibo doesn't make it. But our Sibo does make it. So it's okay. And we make it back right at the start of the fight between Mensab and the Silicone Life from earlier. And this time we get to see the fight. Like that fight that I went back a couple times because I felt like I missed something. We did. We missed the whole fight. We didn't see it at all in the beginning. It just skipped over it. And now we get to see it. So now we know that a manga that is more difficult to follow than a traditional manga as far as I can tell with my limited experience, is now just f***ing with you on purpose. Because it can. It's literally just adding insult to injury at this point. Anyway, so now we have this weird time and space paradox or something. I mean, I have, I don't know what you would call this, to be quite honest. With Sibo and Kiri and these people. You know, Kiri's a few minutes older and Sibo's 10 years older. But they all came back through the forwarding back to a few minutes ago at the beginning of the fight that they were when they left they were at the end of the fight now they're at the beginning i don't fucking know it's very complicated are you keeping up actually to be quite honest i think i am but anyway they take out the silicone life from ensab and she teleports away and siba goes you know what i think i know where she's going and she does and they go and they catch up to her but right when they get to her mensab is telling sue is that how you say that Right when they get there, Mensab's telling her little night guy she'll never forgive Central for blocking his personality regeneration. So I'm, I'm not sure what this means, but I'm kind of assuming that maybe she's been, he's either been rejuvenated or rebuilt by the fabricator, or she has been consistently fixing him up with the fabricator, but in replacing him and his parts in his body, she wasn't able to replace his mind because Central blocked it? That's just a theory. But anyway, they talk to Mensab and they find out that Mensab forwarded their friends from before to the 13th cave to keep them safe from being contaminated by the silicone life. So, silicone life can contaminate normal humans? Is that what I'm getting? Because... I can't tell if that feeds into my weird thought earlier about these just being humans or at least they at least or at least they once were human. I don't know. But anyway, Mensab tells them how to get to the 13th cave and as they're leaving, they're going to say goodbye to the little ugly fairies and the little ugly fairies are going to be like, how did they know that they could talk to us and who the hell are these people because we've never met them before. So the fairies in this timeline don't know who they are or is it this world where did they just go to because other people apparently recognize them so why don't the fairies
Okay, so this is also a good time to bring up that thing from before about that guy saying that they have a grudge that goes back for eons. Because we have some people going forward in time, some people going forward in time other than other people, then they're coming back in time, but they're going back to before they, the time that they left, although it said that it was the time that they left, but it appeared to be the time before they left, they come back and the people here still know them, but the fairies don't, and we have that grudge from eons ago. So was that grudge from prior to this manga ever starting? Did we just not get to see it because it happened before Master Edition 1? Or is that conflict that they have eons old because it's from now, but it's from way earlier in this ridiculous time loop? So it's eons old, but it's actually not old at all. It's not explained. Moving on. But anyway, we're going to flash over to our friends from before, the last edition, those villagers, and they're going to get attacked by the silicone life. Literally the same ones that were just attacking Mensab and them, so I'm assuming they got forwarded somehow? I don't know. And now Mensab is going to go before the central AI, which is essentially a giant baby face. Um, the more you look into various science fiction things, the less creative the Matrix feels. Or at least there's like no original ideas in it that were the Wachowskis. They literally just sandwiched everything that they loved into a movie. But they loved just obscure enough things that nobody in the world knew what the hell they were referencing and they thought they were... They came up with all this stuff on their own. That, that's, a, that's, an, that's another video. But anyway, Mensab shows up to the giant angry looking baby face central AI unit and demands that Sue get have his personality regenerated. And the central AI, and the central AI says no, but they will now transfer all of Toha Heavy Industries away from there. So they're going to transfer the entire network of caves and teleport them or move them in some way shape or form which essentially terminates the agreement that the AI had with the admin. So now the admin's gonna appear to Kiri because now they can't. The admin can now come inside of the cylinders and the caves and all of that, Toha Heavy Industries, because the agreement that they had with the AI has now been terminated by the AI. But if the admin can get in, so can the safeguards. And the admin says, get to the central AI and get there quick. But on the way there, Sibo is going to get shot by a turret and she's laying there looks like she's dying when Santa can starts to take back control of her body because now the safeguards can function inside of this place again but luckily they run into Sibo's dead body the Sibo from before from another world right right when Santa can's trying to take back control of her body so Sibo puts her consciousness in Sibo's body and Santa can gets her body back so now Sibo is facing Santa can <laughs> Also, right at this moment, Kiri reaches the a central AI and stands next to Mensab facing the central AI. And then jump over to the silicone life with the one that had the grudge carrying his little friend. It's like her little torso around. And they find her. Who is her? We don't know, but they've been looking for her. And when they find her, she's half fused inside of a wall. And the little half of a torso girl that he's carrying around wants her consciousness to be transferred inside of this body that's fused to the wall. And one of the guys tries to protest and the guy carrying the torso just says, just do it. And the end. I have no f***ing clue what the f*** is going on. And I love it. Like, it's... Oh, I don't even know. It, it, it got nine. I just, there is, uh, oh, I, you know, this is, con this is just consistently going to maintain a nine for me. I don't know what it is. I don't know how it is. I don't know what's happening. I don't know where it's going. I don't know. All I know is this is one of the coolest things I've read in a long time. Uh, God, I hope it sticks to the landing. 
or maybe just gives me no landing at all. It can just fumble right out the gate in book six and and give me nothing and just kind of end on a black panel, like on a pay, on just a black page. And I'll be like, yep, that was worth every second of it. I, <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. But anyway, as always, Join the Discord. The link is in the description below. If you're interested in supporting this channel, there's a link for my Patreon in the description below. And thank you very much, everybody. I will see you next time.